So I uh, just want to talk really briefly about uh, the Socorro Magma body uh, and why we chose to uh, do a large deployment of seismic instruments uh, in order to study it. So the Socorro Magma body is it's the second largest uh, magma body that's uh, within continental crust uh, in the world that we know about. Uh, the largest is in the Andes um, uh, in South America. It's about 3,000 square kilometers. Um, this magma body is, it's 19 kilometers deep. Uh, it's fairly thin, um, at least as best as we know at this point, um, sort of 100 meters, 150 meters or so um, thick. And uh, the estimates uh, of what it's doing is that it's actually slowly inflating. So we see with a variety of measurements that um, the ground above the magma body is moving upwards. Um, maximum about one and a half to two millimeters a year. Uh, and that slow inflation causes stresses within the crust above it. Uh, and those stresses then lead to earthquakes. So we have earthquakes in the central part of the, the New Mexico area here that are associated with the Socorro magma body. Uh, and so part of this study is to better characterize the earthquakes uh, that we see in the area associated with the magma body as well as trying to get a better idea of the structure of the magma body. Um, there are still a lot of unanswered questions, and so we're hoping that this large number of seismic instruments placed uh, along the northern part of the magma body will help us understand uh, the structure and dynamics of the magma body. We decided to use a variety of seismic instruments to record the data. Um, so we have uh, seven broadband seismometers, um, and so these are uh, recording all three components of ground motion, uh, and they are um, able to, to sample a broader frequency range of signals. Several of my students and I here at New Mexico Tech uh, put out the seven broadband um, seismometers along with assistance from uh, folks here at the Instrument Center. And so we put those instruments out, um, and that involves digging uh, a small hole in the ground to be able to place the sensor um, and bury that underground. Um, and then a box that is, sits at the surface that contains the power system and the recording system. So um, we have the digitizer in the box that takes all of the signals of the ground motion that the sensor is recording. Um, and then we can uh, we'll collect that data um, throughout the time of the experiment uh, and be able to start looking at that. Um, uh, so we have six uh, of those within the Sevieta National Wildlife Refuge and one of those broadband sensors here at the Pascal Instrument Center uh, recording data for the month. Uh, and then in combination with that, we just deployed the 800 nodal seismic um, vertical component nodes uh, out in the last two days. Um, and so those are very densely spaced uh, between about 250 and 300 meters across much of the northern part of the magma body. Uh, so we're using uh, the combination of signals, the high density vertical component instruments, as well as the broadband signals, um, to get a better sense of the, the structure and the earthquakes. Um, having the increased density uh, will certainly help us uh, be able to identify uh, earthquake bounce points um, and reflections off of that magma body um, over a wide swath of that northern part.